<laughs> Good morning, Aquarium Online Academy. Welcome to another day of programming. My name is Sarah, and I work in the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and you are joining us for an episode of Aquarium Live. And what that means is we are going to get a chance to chat with Captain Joe, one of our ocean rangers here at the aquarium, and we're going to learn all about training our animals today. Now, think about, why might we train our animals? Do you have a pet at home that you might train? So that's kind of the question we're going to be thinking about today as we explore some of our animals, we explore with some of our staff, and we explore the aquarium. Now, while we're exploring today, we would love to hear from you. If you want to share your answers or your observations or even ask questions about what we're talking about, go ahead and text us. We have this text number right here. It's 562-286-1838. Now, I've got some friends here in the studio. Dana is controlling the computer, so everything you see behind, and she's waving good morning. And then we have Jen, who's going to be at the computer. She says good morning as well. And she'll take all your questions and observations and thoughts and send them in to me. So if you want to share, go ahead and use that text line. Now, keep in mind that text and data rates do apply. And if you're one of our younger viewers, do make sure that you have adult permission before you go ahead and text us. But send in those observations and those questions and whatever we would love to hear from you. Now, if you're watching this program live, which means it's December, oh my goodness, it's December 29th at 9 a.m., go ahead and text us. But if you're watching this program after December 29th at 9 a.m., we still want to hear from you, but we're not always at that text line. So we have an email address, which you can find just below the phone number. It's live at lbaop.org. So send us your questions to that email, and we'll be able to respond to you there. All right, everyone, are you ready to get started? All right, let's go. So as I mentioned, we're going to talk about training our animals. Now, we train a lot of our animals here at the aquarium. Some animals might seem kind of an obvious answer of who we train, but we train so many animals here, even things like some of our sharks get trained. Now, why do you think we might train our animals? Any ideas? Think about, like I mentioned before, if you have a pet at home, do you train them to do anything? Maybe if you have a dog, you train them to sit or to lie down or to stay, or you train them to walk on a leash, right? So we train all these behaviors and that helps them in their daily -day life. It helps them when you want to feed them. It helps them when you take them on a walk. So we train our animals to do a lot of things in their daily life. And we're going to explore that today. And we're going to start by exploring our seals and sea lions. Now, before we meet up with Captain Joe, I have two plushies right here. Now these are our seal and sea lion. And we're going to start by making some observations because we're all scientists today. And scientists, they spend a lot of time making observations. Now what does that mean to make an observation? Any ideas? Oh, Dana's pointing to her eyes and her ears and her nose. Yeah, so we use our senses to explore the world around us. So we see, we might smell, we might taste, we, listen, we might touch. And then we talk about or we share all those things that we've explored. So we're going to make observations with our eyes today. So we're going to look at these two animals. What do you see? Do you notice anything that's the same or anything that's different? Now, if you would like to share those observations of what you notice about our seal and our sea lion, go ahead and use that text line and text us in your observations, or you can just think them. You can share them with your pet if they're watching with you. You can share them with an adult or with your sibling or a friend, whoever you're watching with. Or you can just think them in your brain and say them out loud. So however you'd like to share your observations. But let's start looking at these two animals. What do you notice? Now, one thing I notice off the bat is their size. Our sea lion is a lot smaller than our seal, which is kind of funny because out in the wild, it's usually the other way around. Most sea lion species are a little bit larger than seals. Not all of them, but mostly the case. But another thing I notice is the color on their body. Did you notice that too? Our sea lion, this one, is one solid color. We like to compare them to ice cream, because who doesn't like to compare things to ice cream? Even though it's the morning time and you're probably eating breakfast, we can still talk about ice cream. Dana said ice cream for breakfast, and I'm all there with her. So our sea lion, it's one solid brown color. So what kind of ice cream can we compare that to? I agree, chocolate. So we like to call our sea lions our kind of have that chocolate ice cream brown fur. Now, if we look at our harbor seal, does it look the same? No, I see spots on it. And it's kind of gray with darker spots. So if we're thinking of an ice cream that's maybe a lighter color, almost like white with dark spots in it, what kind of ice cream would you think? Chocolate chip or my personal favorite, cookies and cream. 
So we call the, seal, the seals, we say they have a mottled color. And that means it's kind of spotted, kind of like chocolate chip ice cream or cookies and cream, where it's sort of that solid white color, but then it's got darker spots in it. So our harbor seal has spots. Our sea lion is a solid color. All right, so that's one difference. What other differences do you see? Now, it might be kind of hard to tell with these animals, but we're going to look at their flippers. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. So we're going to look at their flippers, but we just had a comment come in, and we'll come to that in just a second. So they are flippers. Now take your arms and stretch them out to the side, and stretch them up above. Your arms are going to be your flippers. Now, if you are a harbor seal, you're going to have a little chicken wing. Stick your arm under your armpit. Those are your little seal flippers, little chicken wings. Sea lions, they have these really long strong front flippers. So reach your arm out really long and strong. That's your sea lion flipper. And a little chicken wing, that is your seal flipper. So that's another difference is their flippers. And they're kind of used for different things. They both help the animal swim, but our sea lion is mostly going to push forward with those long, strong front flippers. And they're going to steer a little bit more with their hind flippers. Whereas our harbor seal is going to use their front flippers a little bit more for steering, and they're going to push more with their tail. So their flippers are a little bit different. Now, someone wrote in that they have the same shape. And you're right, their bodies are kind of the same shape. They're kind of long, kind of worm-like, but there is actually a difference. It's kind of hard to see with these. We'll see it when we look at our seals and sea lions. But our sea lion, they're actually able to almost sit up and almost walk on all fours. So those long front flippers help them kind of move, and they've got this kind of curve to their body. Now, they can make their body kind of straight and more streamlined, like a harbor seal, but sometimes on land they kind of sit up straight, whereas our harbor seal is all kind of worm-like. I kind of call them sausages. So that's a good observation is their body shape is very similar. Excellent. Now there's one more difference that I want to talk about, which might be kind of hard to tell from your screen. So I'm going to bring the animals a little bit closer, still kind of hard to tell. But if you were to look closely at the heads of these animals, you would notice one has ears and one doesn't. Now let me rephrase that. It's not that the seal doesn't have ears. Our sea lion has external ear flaps. Now if you reach up and touch your ear, you can feel your ear flap, right? That whole part of your ear right here where my microphone is hanging. And then it leads to that hole inside which leads to your inner ear to help you hear. Now our sea lion has those ear flaps that lead to their inner ear. Our harbor seal, their head looks nice and smooth because they don't have that ear flap. They do have an ear, they can still hear, but they just have a hole behind their eye that leads straight into their ear canal. So that's another difference is external ear flaps, no ear flaps. All right, so we've talked about their color. We talked about their body shape. We talked about their ears and their flippers. Let's meet Captain Joe and see what he has to say about our seals and sea lions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our seal and sea lion habitat. Today we're here to investigate the differences between these two very special marine mammals. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Excellent. So we're going to take a closer look with Captain Joe. You and I just made those observations looking at those plushies or stuffed animals. And remember, we looked at their flippers, we looked at their color, we looked at their body shape, and we looked at their ears. But let's take a closer look at Joe and see if we can notice those differences or even other differences by looking at these animals out in the wild. For one thing, if you take a look at this sea lion, you can see that he has big flippers both in front and back. For another difference, look closely at the sides of the head. You see those? Those are ear flaps. Sea lions have external ear flaps just like us. Now take a look at this harbor seal, and do you see any differences? Little stubby flippers in the back, little stubby paws in the front, and look at the side of its head. No ear flaps. Seals do have ears, but the only thing they have to show for it on the outside are these little holes on the side of their head. No ear flaps for them. Excellent. Did you get a chance to see all those differences we talked about? So the long flippers of the sea lions, the shorter flippers, the little chicken wings I like to call them, of our harbor seals, the ear flaps versus no ear flaps, and then the coloration. It's really obvious for those, these two, our California sea lion and our harbor seal, to see that color difference. Now those colors might change depending on the type of seal or sea lion, but here along our coast where we have our harbor seals and our California sea lion, 
those color patterns hold true where we've got the solid dark color of brown on the sea lion and the spotted pattern on our harbor seal. Now, those are three differences, but I wonder if there's some differences in our seals and sea lions that maybe we can't see just by looking at these animals. What do you think, Captain Joe? Do you think that there's some differences? What about holding their breath? Well, great question. I know quite a few people that work here with our seals and sea lions. Let's go ahead and go ask them. What do you say? Sounds like a plan. All right. So while Joe is going to find our uh, someone who works with our seals and sea lions, we are going to do a puzzle. All right. So the way the puzzle is going to go is Dana is going to bring up the screen. And it's going to be a picture, but most of that picture is hidden. And then slowly, some blocks are going to reveal what that picture is underneath. And your job, scientist, is to use the clues, <coughs> excuse me, use the clues of what we can see on the picture to guess what animal it is. So I'm going to step off the screen. And here we go. All right. So our picture here has revealed some things, but not the full body of this thing. So now our job is to try and guess what animal is hiding behind this picture. Do you have an idea? As always, you can text it into that number you see on the screen. But while you're texting your answers, let's see if we can use some of the clues of what we do see to figure it out. So I like to start with looking at what colors do we see in this image? We see lots of blue, right? There's some blue up here and then down here. And that's important because that's the background of where this animal is. And that can tell us a lot. Like I would think if it's all blue, that maybe it's the open ocean. But also down here, it almost looks like there might be some rocks so, or some sand. So maybe this animal is swimming sort of where there's a lot of open space, but not a lot of other things. No other big rocks or kelp or coral. So maybe it's kind of a clear open ocean space. And then let's look at the body of this animal. What do we see? What colors? Right here. It's kind of yellowish, kind of green, a little bit darker here. And then its body is really long, right? There's this thing here. And then there's another one down here. Do these two things look similar? The pattern right here seems to me to match the pattern over here. So what part of the animal do you think that could be? Oh, so we got some comments coming in. So someone said they see green. Absolutely, I agree. And then someone mentioned flippers. Huh, I wonder if you're talking about this thing right here and the matching one over here. I think that could be a good guess. They kind of look like flippers, but who? or what animal in the ocean is green, has these long front flippers. I mean, we talked about flippers for our sea lion, but that sea lion was brown and had those long front flippers. So what other animal might have flippers? Ooh, someone texted in that they think this animal might be a turtle. Do you agree? Thumbs up if you agree. All right, Jen says she agrees. Let's see, let's have Dana reveal and see what animal this is. Good job, scientists. It is a turtle. This is a green sea turtle. And you can see they have those really long front flippers. And those are going to help them swim. Now, I asked Dana to bring up a video. We're going to watch a sea turtle swim. It's really cool to watch them using those front flippers. They're very strong to help them move. So here we go. Look at that sea turtle. So they're going to, they have those hind or back flippers, which are a little bit shorter. And they use those a little bit in their movement, but they're mostly using those front flippers to push them or propel them through the water, just like that sea lion. So their flippers are used in very similar ways. And then we've got a diver back here. It would be lovely to be swimming in this water with that turtle. All right. Now that we've played our first game, don't worry, we have another game coming up in a little bit. Oh, someone noticed that the turtle had yellow eyes. Good observation. Yeah, so animals, their eyes could be different colors. We'll reveal the puzzle again so that we can take a look at their eyes. Ooh, yeah. So right around their eyes, part of their body kind of looks yellowy. Good observation, scientists. Excellent job. All right, now that we've played our puzzle and we've given Captain Joe some time to uh, go find someone who works with our seals and sea lions, let's meet up with him and see who he found. 
Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jimmy. He's a mammologist taking care of our sea lions, seals, and also our sea otters. And we have our special guest, Parker, here with us today. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Wave hi, Parker. Say hi. Good boy. We're going to talk about our training. We train these animals so that we, they can participate in their health care. We can ask them to open their mouths. We can target and move our fingers over their eyes when we give them eye drops. We also want them to be physically fit and want them to think about the behavior. So when Parker sticks out his tongue at everybody like he's getting ready to do, tongue, tongue, good. Yeah. I say good. And then he gets excited because he knows he's going to get a fish. That's herring. Then we have capelin and we also have squid. So he's very focused on the bucket because he knows he's going to get what we call a reward. If you guys do something good, you may get a quarter. Um, if Joe's going to be good, I might buy him lunch after we do this. Yeah. Training. But the training is really important because we want them to be comfortable with us. Good. Good boy. So there's a variety of behaviors that we do train them. Salute. Good. Good boy. So we ask for the behavior either verbally with our mouths or we do a hand signal. And so Joe's going to do a hand signal. He's going to get his right uh, hand and point to his ear. Look at Parker and point to your ear. Good boy. All right. And now if you get your right hand and shake your index finger back and forth, he's going to do a no. Do a Parker. Good. Good boy. Now stick your right thumb out. Good. Good boy. Good. Now look over there and give, give him a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Hey, come here. Parker, give me a big smooch. Thanks, Good. buddy. Good boy. So that's just a little bit about our training and having him sit here for the whole time that we're filming is a really good experience for him. And now, since he did so good, I'm going to have him um, lift up. You want to wave bye or wave, say bye. You want to dance? Dance for him a little bit. Do some behaviors. Nice. Lift it up. Good boy. Now we're going to do a jackpot, meaning he did everything I wanted him to do. So I'm going to go back in the exhibit and give him all of his fish all at once. You awesome. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're Thank welcome. you so much, bye. Parker. Say bye. Good boy. Let's go. What an awesome time with Parker, our California sea lion. Boys and girls, we're going to send it back to you at the studio. That was great, Captain Joe. Thanks so much to Captain Joe and Jimmy and, of course, Parker. Now, Parker is one of our four California sea lions here, and we also have four harbor seals. Parker is our largest. He's our dominant male, and we can tell that because he's got that bump on his head, and that's called a sagittal crest, and that shows us that he is the dominant male. He is our, also our largest animal here at the aquarium, and at his peak, he will weigh about 840 pounds, so he is a big boy, but we do love Parker here. And we got to watch one of his training ses sessions with Jimmy. Now, there's a couple reasons that Jimmy was explaining that we train our animals. Now, one of them is for their physical fitness. So the animals have their ability to move around their exhibit all day, but when we're training them, we'll give them some high energy behavior. So that's sort of like you move around all day, but then in school you might go to PE where you get to run a little bit more. And so we'll have our seals and sea lions do some behaviors like pillars, which is where they jump straight up out of the water and then go back down, or porpoising where they move sort of like a dolphin might in and out of the water, or those dancing moves that Parker was doing. That's all for his physical fitness. So while it looks like it's playing, for Parker, it's really helping make sure his body stays nice and healthy. And then another reason we train is for mental stimulation. So you go to school and you might run around in PE, but you also sit in class and you learn lots of things and you go from grade to grade and you learn more and more. And that's one of the reasons we train our animals is to make sure that their brain, which is a muscle, keeps working and stays really strong. And then the last, the third reason that we train our animals is for their health care. So we want to make sure that if our animals do need any special attention for their health, they are comfortable interacting with their trainer. And so that way, when that time might come where they may need to go to our Molina Animal Health Care or Molina Animal uh, Care Center to get any kind of health care, they are used to being around people. They are used to those procedures. Now, speaking of that, we are going to check in with one of our veterinarians here and see what it's like to care for our animals. So here is our Molina Animal Care Center before we go check in with Shara. So this is what it looks like. This is our fully functioning vet clinic here at the aquarium. Welcome Ocean Rangers. My name is Shara Seals and I'm here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our veterinary hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Today I'm going to show you our pharmacy. We have a lot of the same medications that humans can get. Sometimes they might be in a pill. 
Sometimes they may even be liquid or drops. Today, we're gonna refill some eye drops for one of our animals. Here, let me show you. This is a prescription for Parker. He's one of our sea lions. Sometimes the animals may not wanna take their medications. So to make it easier, we train them. That way they can get a fish for reinforcement and we make it really positive and fun for them. ways to give our animals their medicine. If the medicine needs to go on the inside, then sometimes we can hide it in their food, like for fish and sharks. Sometimes we need to put it on the outside. So we can apply this ointment to a sea turtle shell to help it heal. Thanks for joining me, boys and girls. Now you know how our animals get their medicine. We'll see you next time. Excellent. Thanks, Shara. Now, we just had a question come in that kind of uh, was answered by Shara, but let's review. So this question is, do fish at the aquarium ever take medicine when they're sick? And the answer is yes, they do. Now, what's great about our animals here and having our fully functional vet clinic here is that we can take really good care of our animals. Now, we only have a couple vets here. We have um, two or three vets here, but we have a huge staff who are always monitoring and caring for our animals. What thing they do is they make observations, just like we are today. So we have aquarists who work with our fish and sharks. We have mammologists who work with our seals and sea lions. And we have aviculturists who work with our birds. And one of the things they do is they spend a lot of time watching our animals. And they're making observations. And they're looking for things like behaviors that seem normal. And then also behaviors that maybe they're not used to seeing, which could indicate or could tell us that maybe the animal is not feeling well or is kind of sick. And for our fish, they can get medicine just like you and I get medicine. Now for our fish, one thing that we might do is we might pull that fish from their exhibit, put them in what we call a holding tank. So it's a tank separated from all the other animals. It gives them some time to rest, to relax, and we can administer their medicine. And sometimes we can put it directly into the water. We don't even need to give it to the fish's mouth. We just put it in the water. And as the fish swims around and breathes in that water, they get the antibiotics or whatever kind of medicine they might need. And then once they're healthy again, we can put them back in their exhibit. So our fish do get medicine if they do get sick. Great question. All right. So we learned a lot today. We learned about seals and sea lions and the differences between those two animals. We learned about what it's like to train them and why we train them. And then we learned about how our animals get some medicine. Let's play another game. Now, this game is about a hermit crab. And we're going to try and find where the hermit crab is hiding. So I'm going to step off the screen and Dana is going to bring up our last game of the day. So find Mr. Hermit Crab. All right, keep an eye on that shell that Mr. Hermit Crab is in. Oh, it's getting confusing. Do you have an eye on it? Do you know which one? Was it one, two, or three? Hmm, any guesses? Well, I see that there are three shells here, and the shells actually have different patterns on them. Did you notice that? Did you notice which shell Mr. Hermit Crab went into? So our first shell right here looks like it has tiny little barnacles on it. And then this one looks like it's almost got little bubbles or circles on it. And then this shell has a really light lined pattern. So which shell? The barnacle shell, number one. The polka dot or bubble or spot shell, number two or the one with the nice lines, number three. Ooh, we've got some guesses coming in. One friend guessed number two, so our polka dot shell. And one friend guessed number three. Dana guesses number one. Oh, we've got all the options. I'm gonna have Dana. Oh, do we have another guess coming in? Is it a guess or a question? Oh, a comment, all right, I'm gonna hold on. Uh, before revealing where Mr. Hermit Crab is hiding for this comment, and let's see. Oh, someone said they like polka dots. Me too. I think that I think all these shells are very pretty, but that polka dot one is very cute with those polka dots. I agree. Polka dots are fun. All right, Dana, let's reveal 
where Mr. Hermit Crab is hiding. Mr. Hermit Crab found his home or his shell in shell number one with those little barnacles. Maybe he wanted some friends because those barnacles are living animals. So maybe he wanted to have some friends hiding with him. But great job, scientists. Good observations trying to find where Mr. Hermit Crab was hiding. And good observations. Sorry? Oh, someone just voted for number one. Excellent job, scientists. But you made lots of observations about the colors and the patterns on their shells as well. And that's an excellent thing for scientists to do. All right. I think we're going to check in with Captain Joe one more time. Uh, maybe to say goodbye. All right, before we say goodbye to Captain Joe, Dana's telling me we have a lot more uh, footage of our seals and sea lions, which is kind of fun to watch. And we have a couple minutes left, so let's bring up some of our footage so we can watch our seals and sea lions. Now, when you're watching, let's see if you can see any of those differences we talked about, their flippers, or the color, or their ears, or if you can notice any other things, make other observations about our seals and sea lions. Ooh. Look at them. So those were two sea lions, and then there's a seal. There's a sea lion. So you can tell the length of their body. Our sea lions' bodies are a lot longer than our seals. There's a sea lion. Look at their flippers. They can do so many cool things. We have trained our animals to do all these fun things to stretch and make sure their bodies are nice and strong. There's our harbor seal glumping. That's how they move on land. They kind of inchworm their way along. Excellent. So that was some great footage of our seals and sea lions, both here at the aquarium and some out in the wild. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> All right, friends. So we have about two minutes left. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice our observation skills. So we talked about seals and sea lions and some of our other animals here, but I'm going to have Dana bring up one of our webcams because this is one of the ways that, our, uh, that we can make observations, just like our aquarists our mammologists and our aviculturists who take care of our animals on a day-to-day -day basis, they watch our animals and make observations. And you can do the same thing by using our webcam. So we have cameras in a lot of our exhibits here at the aquarium, and you can access them from our website. And so I'm going to have Dana bring up one of our webcams. She's going to surprise me which one. And we're going to take a minute, because that's about all the time we have, to make some observations. All right. <gasps> Shark Lagoon. This is excellent. This is one of my favorite exhibits here, and I think it looks so pretty on this camera. And you can watch this at any time and make some observations of our animals here. So what do you see happening here in Shark Lagoon? Do you see any sharks? Do you see any fish? Do you see any other animals? What does the habitat look like? Ooh, there's a shark. And I noticed that that shark has a little bit of black on the tips of its fins, which is where it gets its name. It's a black tip reef shark. Ooh, someone made an observation before when we were looking at our seals and sea lions, and they noticed that they have whiskers. Excellent observation. Now, what's really cool about sea lion whiskers is that each one has its own nerve, so it can kind of move on its own. And they use those as sensors, so they can sense or explore the world around them. Just like we might touch things to explore the world around us, they can use their whiskers to move around and feel things around them. Great observation. Any observations about Shark Lagoon? I know we kind of switch gears to talk about another animal. I notice there's some more sharks coming towards us. Ooh, and these two sharks, they're a little bit different. They have black on their tail as opposed to on their top fin. Those are our gray reef sharks. And then there's a really long shark towards the back. That is our zebra shark. I also noticed that there's a lot of colors down here. This is the coral reef. So this is what their habitat might look like. They would live on a coral reef. All right, scientists, keep making those observations. Feel free to keep sending them in to us if you'd like, or you can just think about them or talk about them with your family around you. But we are all out of time for today. So I'm going to say goodbye. We'll leave our Shark Lagoon up for a couple minutes longer. And you can always access it from our website. Now, if you're looking for more programming, we have another program at 10 where we're going to learn about marine mammals. So we might talk more about seals and sea lions. But we're going to focus more on the conservation or the protection of these animals. So we hope you join us then and have a good rest of your week.